There are numerous challenges when we want to improve outcome for our glioma patients. First is their overall condition. Are they good enough? Are they fit enough to go on experimental treatment? Then also that patients are usually seen too late in the disease course by the subspecialist. So um, we treat, we do clinical trials in recurrent disease where the exposure to a new treatment in an even more resistant disease comes late. Exposure time will be too short. Another challenge is the blood-brain barrier. The brain is protected from access to toxins and especially also many of our cytotoxic or even some of our targeted treatments. They will not readily cross the blood-brain barrier. So if the drug, whatever the intervention is, does not get to the target, then we cannot even conclude that something is not working. Uh, it may still be the right pathway to target, but we don't hit the target. And there are numerous examples when we use monoclonal antibodies, uh, for instance, against EGFR, most recently a monoclonal antibody against EGFR, we're linked to a cytotoxin, but if there's not enough penetration into non-enhancing tissue, then you will not get uh, a good outcome. I believe we need to cross off the word promising from our vocabulary when we talk about uh, drug development. We should look at the data, analyze it, and then say, okay, there is enough data to move forward or not. Um, we sometimes, even with minor effects, overrate uh, what we see. And there may be, in uncontrolled trials, there is a lot of selection bias. I think then we need to move drug development in the upfront setting uh, in, uh, in primary gliomas. In recurrent disease, multiply resistant tumors, this is fine to show the principal feasibility, uh, some safety, but afterwards, if you wanna look for efficacy, I think the upfront setting gives you a much better chance to really be effective. Even for the two approved modalities and treatments over the last 20 years, temozolomide in the recurrent setting did not show a significant improvement in outcome in the small randomized trials available. And tumor treating fields failed to show a superior uh, survival in the recurrent setting. When it was taken early on with enough exposure, enough duration of exposure, both of those treatments have uh, demonstrated that it has uh, anti-tumor effect and will prolong both progression for the overall survival. In order to improve drug development, I think we need to collaborate. And I think there is a good initiative now in the United States with the U19 grant uh, call um, to collaborate. I think we need to do the trials faster, more efficiently, we need to ask ourselves upfront, is this worth into moving into phase three or not? Be maybe a little more self-critical. What kind of uh, threshold we will need to meet in order to go into a large randomized trial? I think the upfront setting, as I mentioned, and then we need to have drugs that reach the, uh, and cross the blood-brain barrier also for non-enhancing tumor tissue we need to be able to demonstrate that in preclinical models and in phase zero and one trial with translational efforts to really quantify that. If the drugs don't get there, even if it's the best drug, it will not work. Now we have on the horizon new technology that may help to open up the blood-brain barrier, thus getting agents in there that previously would not have reached the brain. There's a clear discrepancy between the benefit we see in preclinical models on response and sensitivity of rapidly growing glioblastoma, while we cannot reproduce that in the clinical setting. So I initially said we have to be careful with promise. I think the research is going now clearly looking at blood-brain barrier opening and 
drug distribution. Um, the research is looking very strongly into immunotherapy, even though the first trials have been sobering and disappointing. I think there is uh, opportunity to find out more with combination and to identify biomarkers that would predict who can benefit and who cannot. Um, viruses, oncolytic viruses, um, to, ca to carry um, genes, modify the immune system or oncolytic viruses with their activity by themselves or antigen presentation together with immunotherapy is another option on the horizon that has, to, has been looked at and is being looked at. So there is opportunities. I think the targeted treatments for the subgroup when they have specific genetic alterations and mutations to mention FGFR3, TAC3 fusion, uh, IDH as a target is looked at. So there is this better understanding of molecular biology and the molecular genetics of brain tumors hope that this can be translated into clinical efficacious treatment. Thank you.